For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Let me tell you, America and the world is in the condition it is because it is the judgment of God. You heard it. It is the judgment of God, coronavirus, because this nation does not want God. Here we are in a little city called Daytona Beach. We're on a farmer's market, and how many times has the police been called because of a preacher? And look at it now. This is because this nation and this world doesn't want God in Jesus Christ. You cry health care. Where's your health care today? They're closed. You gotta call the hospital in order to go to the emergency room. I have preached over and over that the schools don't want God. So where are your schools? They're closed by an act of God. And the only way you're going to get out of this is to repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. And there's no guarantee you'll be saved coronavirus. But when you die, you won't go to hell. You need to listen up. You need to pay attention to the Bible preaching. There are even churches that are closed today. Shame on them. But I tell you that their God, small G-O-D, is not powerful enough as the God that is preached here at the farmer's market every Saturday. And that God is Jehovah of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob of the Lord Jesus Christ has suffered and died according to the scriptures. And was buried. And arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the difference. Religion is dead. Jesus Christ is alive. He is risen from the grave. And God still has his mercy. God is still offering grace. He still tells Christians, go in all the world and preach the gospel. Show up at the farmer's market when there's no one there. And preach Jesus. I don't even hear the devil's music being played. But I hear the word of God. I hear that Jesus Christ is lifted up and I'm not ashamed to tell you that I love the Lord Jesus Christ because he saved my soul. And he's able to save your soul. And we are in an epidemic, a great epidemic that happened through the whole world. The world has seen the Black Death. The world has seen Asian flu. The world has seen coronavirus. And I tell you what the world is not seeing is repentance and turning to God. And that's a shame. When 9-11 happened and Islam slammed those airplanes into those towers, the Pentagon, and the ground in Pennsylvania, President George Bush, who was a Christian, declared that as a nation we should turn to God in prayer and the church houses were open and people prayed to God. Not during coronavirus. No, I'm going to turn to try to find some toilet paper. I'm going to try to find some Lysol. But I am not dare to go try to find God. And how dare that preacher show up 
and come here on a Saturday and preach Jesus that he does every week. I'm here to preach Jesus because that Jesus is still able to save your soul even in a crisis. And your soul still needs to be saved. Without Jesus Christ, you are without hope. When the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the blessed hope, and he's coming. Not kind of morbid, but when a Christian looks at what's going on in the world, we're getting happy. Because the Bible has foretold the crisis and the troubles and the tribulations before the great tribulation. And that our hope before the tribulation period is that Christ will come for his bride. At a moment of a twinkling the eye, the last trump shall blow, and I ain't talking about Donald. And the dead in Christ shall arise, those who have died in Christ, and those that remain that have not died in Christ will be caught up together with them in the clouds, and then we go see Jesus. That's a blessed, glorious hope. And until then, the Bible states, preach the gospel. And the gospel is that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now you may try to ignore God today. But you will not ignore God on Judgment Day when the Bible, not the preacher, the Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. And if you don't believe in God, I don't care if the Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. The Bible says that the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. And yet the Bible starts with, in the beginning, God. And we preach God through Jesus Christ. That the loving, long-suffering of Jesus Christ and God, that he's not willing that any should perish. God wants you to repent because you are a sinner. The wages of sin is death. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the fact is, if you have been born of a mother, and you have, the Bible says that in sin my mother conceived me. We're born little sinners. And we grow up to be big sinners. And Christ came into the world to seek them that are lost. And the only means of salvation is not to reject the, the Bible. Not to ignore what the preacher is saying. But the only means of salvation wrought and set forth by God. Is that you're to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. And the only means is by Jesus who said himself 
I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There is no access to heaven without Jesus Christ. For by grace are you saved through faith that is not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man boast. And you may think, oh, I'm good. But the Bible says there is none that doeth good. And in case you want to argue, the Bible says there's none that doeth good. No, not one. So don't even try to think that you're the exception to the rule. You're not. You are the sinner that Jesus Christ came to seek, that you may believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That you can be welcomed into his family, be adopted as a son through the belief and faith in that Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, was take away the sin of the world. If there's one thing that coronavirus ought to do, it ought to scare you out of hell to believe on Jesus. Listen, they're saying that if you're to get it, if you're to get it, there may not be enough re respirators in the hospital. But there's enough of the blood of Jesus to save your soul. Doctors may have to choose, do you live or do you die? The Bible says, for all have sinned, for all have come short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is death. You're going to die anyway. Whether you die by coronavirus or you die by cancer or you die by getting hit by a car or you just die of natural causes, you're going to die. And without Jesus, you're going to wake up in hell. I know hell is not a popular subject, and yet the, the churches that don't preach hell are not open on Sundays. Isn't that funny? And I'm not here to preach church. Church will not save your soul. Only by Jesus Christ. Keep your money. Because you cannot buy your way into heaven. Jesus said, I am Jesus. Jesus am the way. I am Jesus speaking. The way. There is no other way. There are billions of billions of ways to get to hell. And there's one way to the Father. Through Jesus Christ. Religion is a perfect way to get to hell. There are people in hell that went to church. There are people in hell who were faithful to their church. But they had not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. There are people in hell that gave money. And they gave little money, they gave tons of money to charity. And they're in hell because they have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Hell is full 
of good people. But they were too good to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. When the Bible says there's none that doeth good. One of these moments, and I don't know when, but one of these times, you will close your eyes to death. You will die. And that moment, saved or lost, the Bible preaching will become real. You will say at that point in time, saved or lost, that preacher man was correct. And if you are saved, you'll be, I thank God I listened to him. And in glory, you'll be thanking God that God sent a preacher to the farmer's market. And if you close your eyes to this world, and you wake up in hell, you will think, oh, if I only listened to that preacher, that idiot was right. That maniac was true. That foolish man that yelled at us preached the gospel according to Jesus. And yet, that will not at all get you out of hell. Because once you enter into hell, you don't come out. You will never find an exit door in hell. And yet, in heaven, you will not have to worry about viruses anymore. You will not have to worry about sickness and epidemics. By putting your faith and trust in Jesus, you will go to a perfect, better place, paradise, where God the Father and God the Son and the Holy Spirit dwell forever with the believers that have put their faith and trust in Jesus. You can rest assured in the blessed hope that Jesus Christ is able to save your soul. Jesus Christ is able to wash away your sins. Though how guilty you are. You can come and confess your sins and he is faithful enough to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But you must believe, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You have no hope without Jesus Christ. You don't have any hope in church. Your church is probably closed. Doesn't that say something about salvation? Your church is closed, and yet here is the gospel of Jesus Christ being preached. 
on a non-Sunday morning to ruin your day to hear about the blessed hope. I mean, the governor of Florida's orders are stay home. And only that business that's essential. And if the police were to come and say, hey, why are you here? I'm here preaching. Is that essential? I say it's essential enough for them to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved because if I don't come, they may die without hearing about Jesus and end up in hell. That's essential. And the governor I read last night say churches may be open. Just follow the rules. And yet your church is closed because your church is dead and your church can't save your soul. Will you come out of that church? Will you see that Jesus is knocking on the door and he wants you to come out? And to believe on him. Church is for those that are saved. To come and learn and fellowship with other believers. Church is not a mark. Oh, if I go to church, I'll go to heaven. That's a lie. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world, and thou shalt be saved. Because if you die in your sins, you will pay for your sins. In eternity, in the lake of fire that burneth forever. That's how you pay for your sins. You burn. And you are in torment. And when you allow Jesus Christ to purchase you and your sins on Calvary's cross, when you lay your sins upon Jesus Christ, as far as the east is to the west, thou shalt be forgiven. And when your sins are under the blood of Jesus, they are remembered no more by God. And when God doesn't remember your sins, how wonderful and gracious that there will be no imputation upon you. For the Lamb of God taken away the sin of the world. And the question is, are you washed in the blood? I didn't say, are you washed in the water? Because baptism can't save you. All it does is get you wet. And in hell... You'll wish you had a little drop of baptism water to cool your tongue as you're tormented in the flame. Many people in hell have been baptized, sprinkled, immersed, 
And they are in hell because they did not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You go to hell because you reject Jesus Christ. No matter who you are or what you are or where you are, It is not what you know. It is who you know. And the who to know is Jesus. There is no other name given amongst men. Whereby we must be saved. You are in danger of hell fire. And Christ came to seek that which is lost. And when you have received the Son, you will have eternal life. And when you reject the Son, you will not receive life, but the wrath of God abiding upon you. And the wrath of God is hell. And hell does not get extinguished. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. And the books were open. And whosoever was not found written in the Lamb's book of life, the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. And if your name is not in that book, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's the John 3.16, you see the signs. It's appointed unto men once to die. But after this, the judgment. You may not believe in God, but the Bible still stands to say, prepare to meet thy God. Believe it or not, you will meet God. And if you meet God without Jesus, you're in condemnation. And you're alone in the world and without hope. And all you need to do is come to Jesus with your sins and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ with your heart and thou shalt be saved. Call upon 
Jesus. Save me, Jesus, from my sins. Cleanse me, Jesus, as that preacher speaks. It's okay to get saved because you don't want to go to hell. That's what happened to me. April 21st, 1987, I got saved because I didn't want to go to hell. And I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and I got saved. And I became saved April 21st, 1987 because I put my faith and trust in Jesus alone. I came out of the Catholic Church and I met Jesus. I did not meet Jesus in the Catholic Church. I met him outside the Catholic Church. And Jesus Christ saved my soul. By me putting my faith and trust in Jesus. And being washed in the blood of Jesus. I became saved. I became washed in the blood. I became a Christian. Not by name. But by the merit of Jesus Christ alone. Because I believe the gospel that we're to preach. That Jesus Christ suffered and died. According to the scriptures. And he was buried. And he rose again. The third day. According to the scriptures. That is the only hope. And the blessed hope. And Jesus Christ will come again. He will call his bride away. And you'll meet the wrath of God. If you decide to die in your sins. And if you choose to put your faith and your trust in Jesus alone. And die. The Bible says absent from the body. And present with the Lord. If you die without Jesus. And he died. And was buried. And lifted up his eyes in hell. Are you washed in the blood? Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? And that power is found at Calvary. Where Jesus
Jesus suffered and died according to the scriptures. And he was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is Jesus' salvation. That is the biblical salvation. That is God's salvation. That is the only salvation. Rest assured that only Jesus saves. And only Jesus saves. And your eternal life rests upon what Jesus Christ has done. And not what you can do. The only thing you can do is you can die according to the scriptures. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. That's what Christians are proclaimed to preach. We're not here to proclaim to feed the poor help the homeless, be good doers. No, we're ordered to preach the gospel to you that is lost. Because you need to be saved. And there is no other salvation. than the salvation of Jesus Christ. Death is coming. And the world runs to toilet paper and it does not run to God. You cannot find salvation in a grocery store. You cannot find heaven in a cure. You will not find God in a doctor's office. Looking to be relieved of your problems. God is not found inside of a bottle of alcohol. And you cannot smoke God from a pack of cigarettes. You can't find God while buying pills from a pusher. You're not going to find God in the way of a prostitute. You're going to find God through Jesus Christ alone. And you will have to give up your sins and confess your sins and to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. And rest assured, if and when coronavirus is gone, there'll be 
is another judgment of God. And then another judgment of God. Until the day you face the judgment of God at the great white throne judgment where you will proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord. At that point, it's too late. It's just too late. Especially when you've heard a preacher preach the salvation of God. Go get me that other chair. And the salvation of God is the one that said I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And them are the words of Jesus, not me. There is no hope without the blessed hope. And the blessed hope is Jesus Christ. There is no heaven without Jesus, for Jesus is the way. There is no mercy and no grace without the merciful one, Jesus. Look to Jesus and be saved. Look to the one that's able to save your soul. And that one is Jesus Christ. Look and live upon Jesus Christ. Look to God's salvation. And God's salvation is rested upon Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is able and will save your soul if you were to call upon him and believe to be saved. And there is no satisfaction of God except the satisfaction that His Son suffered and died upon Calvary's cross that we may have life. And they buried Him. And the world rejoiced. We got rid of that lunatic. We got rid of that fanatic. We got rid of Jesus. And three days and three nights, he came out of that grave. And the angel proclaimed, he is not here. He is risen. That's the greatest news of all headlines. And it's not fake news. It is news of hope. It is news of glory. It is news that he is not here. He is risen to give you eternal life. And that eternal life Rest in Jesus Christ. You can't go anywhere else to escape hell.
You can't do anything else with your sin. But bring them to the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. Jesus Christ is the natural cleansing blood. Anything else is artificial preservatives not approved by God. Religion works. Science. Education is all artificial in the eyes of God. You will not get to heaven without Jesus Christ. You will have no hope of going to heaven without Jesus Christ. Fear God and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't fear coronavirus. Fear the one that brought coronavirus, God. Coronavirus is an evil that has been produced by our sins. Coronavirus is not Democrat, it's not Republican, it's not even Chinese. Coronavirus is the result of man's sins. And coronavirus has already proved the wages of sin is death. Many have died. because of sin. And you will die of sin and if it's not coronavirus, it will be something else. But you will die. And when you die, you will wake up of one or two places, no other, You'll wake up in heaven by Jesus Christ. Or by hell, anything but Jesus. Or nothing. You don't have to do anything to go to hell. You can go to church to go to hell. You can be baptized to go to hell. You can be good to go to hell. You can reject the preaching to go to hell. You can listen to your car stereo and go to hell. But you must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. And saved for what? Hell. It's plain and simple. There is nothing else. There's no remedy. There's no merit. There's no works. There is no other salvation than that of Jesus Christ. You are not safe, and you are not well in your disregard of what scriptures say that Jesus saves. You must turn or burn, repent or perish. 
There is no other way. Then the way of Jesus that said, I am the way. The truth and the light. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. And when you are six feet separated from the world, underground in a casket, your soul will be in heaven by Jesus or in hell without Jesus. Whether you die of coronavirus or you just pass away. And in hell, there is no R.I.P. You don't rest in peace in hell. Because peace is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace. And the Holy Spirit is not in hell. So there'll be no love, no joy, no peace, no patience, no long-suffering in hell. In the absence of the third member of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. There is no salvation in hell. For Jesus won't be in hell. He's already gone to hell for us. But in hell you have chosen to do it your way. And your way is not the, the way of God, Jesus Christ. The H2O. There will be no party in hell. There's no light in hell. For Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Hell has absence of light. And Jesus, who is the light. There's no light in Jesus. There's no life in hell without Jesus. For Jesus is the light. There is no water in hell. The rich man said, oh, if I could have a little drop of water to cool my tongue. Because Jesus said, I am the water of life. There's no wine in hell. Come on, preacher, give me a verse on that one. And the vine tree said, the wine that cheereth God and man. Judges. God is not in hell, so neither will the wine. There's no truth in hell. Because Jesus said, I am the truth. And Jesus said, the father of lies is the devil. He's the liar and the father of it. Can you imagine being lied to all eternity? By Satan, your father. You are of your father, the devil. You either have Satan as your father, or you have God the Father through Jesus Christ. It's that simple. And to be a child of God to the Father is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved.
And you're not going to be saved without Jesus Christ. There is no way and no how God will allow you into heaven without Jesus Christ. You cannot and will not make it without Jesus. And don't worry. When you do enter hell, you will finally believe the words of the preacher on a Saturday morning. But it's too late. And it is a shame, it is sorry that the Word of God is ignored. But God said His Word will not return void. I don't mind. I love preaching. I love the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord willing, this video will go out in the internet and maybe somebody else will hear and believe when you choose to reject Jesus. Or maybe Lord willing in God's long sufferingness, maybe sometime down the road with God's mercy, maybe you will get saved. I don't know. I hope you do. It's my prayers. I mean, the, the actualness of my ministry is to tell the lost about Jesus and to grow Christians in the Lord. Now, I can't save you, but I can preach the message of salvation. I can tell you how to get saved. But neither God or myself are going to force you to get saved. May God do something in your life to get your attention. Whatever it needs to be to get your attention. That if it will get you to Jesus for salvation, let God do it in your life. Listen, even Paul, the apostle, has turned people over to Satan because of their sins. And one of them got right. Maybe if you get coronavirus and lay in a hospital bed and call upon Jesus Christ to save your soul, it'll be worth it. I know men who've gone into prison and they had nothing else. And they called upon Jesus. It took a prison cell. To get them right with God. Maybe if God takes you down and takes everything away from you. Like he did Job. And he sure got Job's attention. Maybe God should put a little more tribulation in your life for you to come to Jesus and be saved. You say, preacher, that sounds awful. Not if it gets you saved and gets you out of hell. And you're not even touched by what I'm saying to you. 
I'm calling upon the wrath of God upon you that you will escape the wrath of God in hell. There's a loved one that I called upon God to do whatever it took, and God did it. Now, he didn't get saved to his own discredit. Maybe you are so accustomed to that man preaching every Saturday. And we'll hire a DJ, we'll turn the music on, we'll just ignore him. I don't care about me. It's the word of God that bothers me that you're ignoring. Maybe from this day forth, maybe I start praying to God that he gets your attention. That God, whatever it is, my prayer, whatever it is for the people at the farmer's market that you have given to me to preach to, whatever you have to do in their life for them to call upon Jesus Christ, Lord, let it be so. And them are frightening words. Because we have an all-powerful God. And we have a God that's in control of Satan. I am here to hear that you, to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. I do not want to call to witness against you. At the great white throne judgment. I want to see you raptured when I'm raptured. And to be raptured when I'm raptured, you have called upon the same Jesus Christ. As your Savior. And maybe I should call upon God with my heart because I love you guys enough that maybe the Lord needs to send a little more tribulation, something into your life that you will take Jesus more seriously. Maybe a little anger and judgment upon the farmer's market that we've been here for five or six years. That God will allow me still to preach at the farmer's market, but God to put a little heat, turn up the burner. Not because I hate you, not because I want to see you suffer, but I want to see you call upon Jesus to be saved. Week after week, many of you ignore. He's going to say the same thing. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And soon he'll pack up and he'll go away. And when he goes away, we don't have to hear it the next week. I understand. I'm doing my part. I am preaching the gospel. I thank God for that opportunity. Glory God the Father, will you upon the, the patriots, the vendors, and all the people, the personnel of the farmer's market, will you get their attention in any way, anyhow, that you see fit, and the customers, that they are to call upon Jesus Christ as their Savior. And Lord, if they are to, to still to reject you as their Savior, they have done it against the preaching of the gospel. And they have done it against the prayers of the preacher that cares for them. And I'm not mad. I'm disappointed. 
But the Bible tells me many will go the broad way. Few will go through the straight gate. I would hope to find a few here. If only one. And I'm not moving on to God says move on. And I have seen several cases with several ministries where God says, you're done. Do that one last time and I'll move you elsewhere. I had one ministry got, okay, go ahead, finish out the month, but I'm done there. I don't feel that God is done with this farmer's market yet. I've done my part. I preach the gospel. That's my part. I've been faithful to God. I've also been a sinner against God. I'm still a sinner saved. I still need to confess my sins. And he's still able to forgive me my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I'm nobody important. And many of you don't even know my name. I don't care. But you have heard the name of Jesus. That there's no other name given amongst men. Whereby you must be saved. And I will preach the same message wherever God sends me. Wherever God tells me to go. My dream ministry would ever just to preach before the United Nations. Now I tell the people in the United Nations that Jesus saves. And the land of Israel belongs to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If Donald Trump were to stand here right now, I'd tell him that only Jesus saves. And I tell him to call upon Jesus Christ and pray to Jesus Christ about this Christ. I don't know what you call a past president, but if Obama was here, I tell Obama, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And I have. Every time we get a new president, when he's inaugurated in January, I send off to the White House, the president of the United States, a letter and a gospel track about Jesus Christ. I've done that all the way back to Ronald Reagan. If Jimmy Carter was here, I'd tell him give up his works, give up his church, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. If Bill Clinton was here, I'd say believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. If Hillary Clinton was here, I'd tell her to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. I can't think of the Speaker's house name that everybody hates. If she was here, I say, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. I know a man that met Janet Reno, a preacher, and told her that Jesus Christ is the only way of salvation. Who knows? I may have met the mayor of Daytona Beach. I have maybe met the governor of Florida. I don't know. I don't know who's ever I come across in about 18 years of ministry, and I've told them the same thing. Only Jesus Christ saves whoever they are. I have not once told them to go to church to get saved. I have not told them baptism saved. I have not told them their works will save. I have told them and you that Jesus Christ alone saves.
I've, I've never, never baptized, baptized one, one person. person. Never. never. But I had led people to Jesus Christ. That only by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone are you able to be saved. And may God give you, Bender, that rejects the gospel, no business. And give those that like the preaching, give them the business. Whatever it takes for you to turn to God and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm not doing it to be mean. I'm doing it to prevent you from hell. I don't care what God does in your life. If it gets you out of hell, so be it. I'd rather have you wrap your arms around me in the gates of Jerusalem than for you to cry out that God has said to you, Depart from me, workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Jesus is Lord. People come up to me, you don't preach the love. You don't have love. I try to be here every week. That's love. You don't realize it. I know what love is. Because the Bible says God is love. You don't know love because you don't know God. This farmer's market has rejected God and has hired a DJ to go against the preaching of God. Where's your vendors? Where are your customers? Hey, you want to give up God? Maybe God will say, okay, go somewhere else. I'll give you a better field. Maybe. I don't know. Right now, it's still for me, the farmer's market. Where are the schools? There is no God in the schools. There is no Bible in the school. There is no prayer in the school. There is no Jesus in the school. There are no teachers and no students in schools. Think about that. Think about that. It's that, that plain and simple. simple. Where God is absent, may God have you be absent. The Bible says as far as children, you're to bring them to Jesus. Don't hamper them. And you hampered the children by bringing them to a school that said, oh, we're monkey men in the Big Bang. Rather than in the beginning, God created. And there are churches that don't even believe that. Just because it says church does not mean it's of God. Just because it's a preacher behind a podium or pulpit doesn't mean they are of God. There'll be more preachers in hell than you would ever to think there would be. Preaching does not give you a license to go to heaven. Believing on the Lord Jesus Christ alone and only is able to save your soul. There is no other salvation than that of Jesus. And when you reject Jesus Christ, God will reject you. That loving God will tell you to depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, I 
never knew you. God, your love. God is holy and righteous. And he cannot allow sin in his holiness. For he says, be holy, for I am holy. And you're not holy with sin. God, whatever it takes for these people to even acknowledge Jesus Christ, I have my heart and love desire for them to be saved. Lord, I pray for the honor and glory of your son, Jesus. So be it. May them that reject Jesus openly. And I don't even know how to pray the rest of that prayer, Lord. Lord, as of now, I claim this field as a field that you're giving me. Even times I call it my church. There are people here that love you and they, they like what's being done and they, they praise what's being done. But as the Bible says, there are many in this, this place that reject you. And Lord, those that hate you and reject you, I don't call death and hell but I call that you make death and hell real to them. That they will call upon Jesus Christ from their heart and believe of their self that Jesus Christ alone is able to save their soul. May they not be able to ignore you. Because if they continue to ignore you and reject you, God, you will ignore them and reject them at the great white throne judgment. Lord, week after week, I have tried to give them the gospel. And they become callous and uncaring. They need a little lightning and thunder and rain in their life. A little whirlwind. Maybe a drought. I believe this coronavirus, Lord, is a judgment upon you to get attention. The Lord, as I see, I don't see, is getting much attention. I have even seen so-called churches close their doors. Lord God, may the people of this nation, the people of this farmer's market, the people of this world, wake up. And may the few of them, as we know about the many, may the few of them come through the straight gate. And that gate says, I am the way, the truth, and the light. And no man cometh unto the Father but through you, that straight gate. Maybe I have not been praying enough. 
I know I haven't been prayed enough. Lord, I have one specific prayer. You know what that prayer is. But with the top ten, Lord, this farmer's market. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, my Savior, I pray. Pray. So be it. One day the Bible preacher will be real for you. I hope and pray it's real as you enter into heaven. But you're not going to enter heaven by rejecting the Jesus that we preach. If a deadly disease won't get your attention, the great white throne judgment will. And then it's too late. Don't have much of an audience anymore, preacher. What's that? I got the whole host of angels listening. Jesus Christ. I'm going to the place where there's no more sin, no more problems. I hope you go to the same place through Jesus Christ. Wait to the day that God mocks you. Wait to the day that God laughs at you. God will get the last laugh. Psalms. In Proverbs. Call upon Jesus Christ as the Lord before you die. Before you call upon Jesus Christ, Lord. Before you're cast off of the lake of fire that burneth forever. It's simple. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. You have no hope without Jesus Christ. You have no light without Jesus Christ. You have no truth without Jesus Christ. And you have no way without Jesus Christ. You can't even stay to the time you're posted, 1 o'clock. But God will hold true to His Word. Says the farmers market 1 p.m. and you're closing up at noon. You can't even hold to your words. But let me tell you, God will hold true to his words. And when God says that you reject Jesus Christ, he will reject you. And when, Jesus, when the Bible says if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, you will be saved. And through Jesus Christ, you can die and be absent from this body and present with the Lord. Or without Jesus Christ, you can die and lift up your eyes in hell in torments. 
And if you die without Jesus Christ when the gospel has been preached to you, you're a fool. And it's okay, go ahead and mock on, because the Bible said there'll be mockers. Proverbs chapter 1. I don't care. In fact, your mockery increases me to do it more. Because I already been told what God told me what you would do. And the fact is that they gave Jesus Christ the cross for doing good. That Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. And he was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That you might have eternal life. And that eternal life rests in Jesus. We're all going to die one day. The wages of sin is death. Behold, the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. If that Lamb, Jesus, has not taken away your sin, you go off into hell. If you trust in the Lamb of God, you go to heaven. You're not good. The Bible says that there is none that do it good. No, not one. Death is coming. The wages of sin is death. Death is coming. Whether by coral virus or however you die, you're going to die one day. And at that moment you die, you will be a Bible believer. Even if you end up in hell. And in hell you'll say that preacher was right, but it's too late. In heaven you'll say that preacher's right, I'm glad I listened to him. Not, there's not being glad in me. The Bible tells me to go into all the world and preach the gospel. You'll be glad that Jesus was able to save your soul. You can't do nothing to please God. It has all been done and all finished through Jesus. Life will come to an end. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And he that believeth with the heart believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. He that has the Son has everlasting life. But he that, he that has not the Son shall not see light. But the wrath of God abiding upon him. Come now. Let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be made white as snow. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. It's that simple. You can go to hell as a good person. You can go to hell as a church person. You can go to hell by a giving person. You only get to heaven by Jesus said, Jesus said, I am the way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus is the only access to God. That's what we're told to preach. Keep your money. I don't want your money. Now think about hearing a preacher say, keep your money. Keep your money. I don't want it. I want you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. I want your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life so you'll go to heaven. And going to heaven is by Jesus Christ alone. God will take care of me. He has and will. But let me tell you, as a sinner, you reject Jesus Christ and God will reject you. It's that plain and simple. You can mock on. I can show you in the Bible where it says mockers. I can show you in the Bible where they mock Jesus Christ himself. Make fun, ridicule, cuss. 
It's in the Bible. Matter of fact, when people mock and criticize, you're only proving the Bible more real to me. Well, they mocked Jesus. They made fun of him on the cross. Yeah, I know, but who were they mocking? The Lord or Jesus? Jesus. Come down off the cross if you be God. When you come off the cross, we'll believe who you are. They mock Christians into preaching all the time. Nothing new under the sun. People don't realize that this coronavirus is a wake-up call from God. And they're not listening. They're not listening. But only by Jesus Christ is a man able to be saved. You know, they're packing up. I guess we'll pack up. Would you like this, sir? I appreciate it. Thank you. You admire this guy.